Hello everyone, Jennifer Maker here. Today we're going to make a layered cardinal shadow box, just like this one. I adore cardinals. We have so many of them in our backyard and their bright red feathers always cheer me up. And I also love that cardinals are meaningful to many people. You may have heard the phrase, Cardinals appear when angels are near, yes? So while the origin isn't clear, I did some research and so many different cultures view birds as messengers. And the color red is associated with life and love for many people, myself included. I mean, it is my favorite color. So I think there are many reasons why cardinals remind us of loved ones. So I wanted to create an easy layered cardinal design that is perfect to display. So I'm going to show you a few ideas, including some special light up shadow box frames, just like this one that you could make at home just using cardstock. So come on over to my craft table with me and I will show you how. Like most layered cardstock projects, the supplies for our cardinal are really pretty simple. Of course, you'll need some good quality cardstock in a variety of sizes and colors. I recommend the solid core 65 pound paper since you don't want to see the white edges in your design. And we'll use a variety of adhesives like these to create different levels of depth between the layers in our cardinal. You can experiment with different combinations, of course. I'll show you a special trick to make sure your layers are even for a really polished look. And I'll share how to get glue dots to stick to the cardstock, not to yourself. <laughs> All right, so I used a Cricut Maker 3 to cut my layers, but you can use any Cricut cutting machine for this project. I've even included a cardinal sized just for the Cricut Joy. I'll show him to you at the end. We'll use several of our usual paper crafting tools as well. The brayer will be particularly useful. Now, if you wanna display your cardinal in a purchased shadow box with glass, visit my tutorial for this project at jennifermaker.com slash cardinal SVG for details on applying the vinyl decal to the front. So here's the decal, I know it's hard to see, but <laughs> it's really easy though. And you'll just need some vinyl, some transfer tape, a way to clean the glass and a weeding tool. And remember how I mentioned a DIY box frame? I'm actually sharing two versions. One that uses the scoring tool to create the frame's creases, while the other uses the normal fine point blade. I'll show you how to make both versions and then we'll compare the results. They seem very similar, but there's a reason you might like one approach more than the other. I think the experiment will really light up your day. <laughs> All right, so are you ready to make a beautiful layered cardinal design? Let's get started. Step one, get my free cardinal SVG files. Go to jennifermaker.com 401 and look for libraries in the red bar at the top. And then either click get a password if you don't yet have one or click enter the library. You can find the designs on the page by searching for design number 401 and then click it to download the zip file with SVG files for cutting on a Cricut or another cutting machine, DXF files, and printable PDFs for cutting by hand. I'm gonna show you how to cut the SVG designs on a Cricut cutting machine because it's so awesome and precise, which is perfect for this project. In the SVG folder, you'll see four files. One is just a cardinal, which is sized to cut easily on a joy. He is so cute, and I'll show you him at the end. The file with the cardinal and forest layers is the main design, which I'll show you how to make today. The layer design fits in a 10 inch square shadow box, but you can also make your own shadow box. I've included two DIY shadow box frames, one that uses dashed cut lines for the creases and another that uses a scoring tool. We'll make both and compare the results. Next, upload the layered cardinal SVG file to Cricut Design Space. If you'd like to make one of the frames, upload that file as well. If you're unsure how to do this, go to jennifermaker.com slash SVGS to learn how to unzip and upload SVG files. We'll start with the cardinal, so add that file to your canvas for now. Step two, prepare your design files. Here's how my layered cardinal design looks on my canvas in Cricut Design Space. If you need to, zoom out to see all of the design by clicking on minus sign at the lower left, or you can just press command or control zero on your keyboard to see the whole thing. 
If you're going to add your cardinal to a store-bought shadow box frame with glass, you are all set to cut and can click make it. I've included written instructions for making that version over at jennifermaker.com slash cardinal SVG. I'm going to make my own frame from cardstock, so I won't have a spot for the angel quote. I'll remove that layer by clicking on it on the layers panel and clicking delete at the top. Now I don't recommend resizing the design if you're going to follow along with me, so that's all we need to do to the cardinal. Let's hide the cardinal for now while we get our frame set up. To do that, click on the eye icon next to group in the layers panel. Now let's take a look at the shadow box frames. I've uploaded both so you can see what they look like in Cricut Design Space. I made two versions of the frame because the different tools create very different results. Wait until you see the difference. On the left is the version that doesn't use a scoring tool. You can see the little dashed cut lines that will crease later on. This one doesn't need any changes, so you're good to go. On the right is the scoring tool version. For this one, we need to adjust a few lines. Select the design and click ungroup so we can work with them. In the layers panel, notice that there are two layers that are just lines. These are your score lines. Hold your shift key down and select both layers. Now click the drop down menu under operation at the top and select score. Now the Cricut knows that we don't want to cut those lines and will prompt us to use a scoring tool instead. Awesome, right? There's one more step though. To make sure the score lines stay in the right spots and actually score on your paper, you need to select the words above them in the panel and click attach at the bottom. And that's all there is to setting and attaching your score lines. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to assemble the cardinal with the no score line version of the frame. So I'm just going to delete that score line version for now. But I wanted you to see how to attach the score lines. All right, so make sure to unhide the cardinal. And now we have the cardinal and our shadow box frame and we're all set. Make sure you have your right machine selected and click make it. Step three, cut your layered cardinal. If you're prompted, click on mat and you want to use 12 inch by 12 inch and then click continue. Now your mats may look different depending on which variation you're making, don't worry about that. If you're using a different size paper for any of the colors, adjust the material size under the first mat that uses it. I'm using eight and a half by 11 paper for the red layers, so I'll change those. Check your white mats to see where the little circle for the cardinal's eye will cut out and make sure you don't lose it. And then click continue. For the majority of my mats, I use the medium cardstock setting with more pressure. But the very detailed cardinal layers cut better using cardstock for intricate cuts. To find that setting when you get to those mats, click on browse all materials and type intricate in the search bar. Then select the result and click done. And leave the pressure set at default. If you're having trouble removing the intricate layers from your mat after you cut them, try cutting them using a blue light grip mat instead of the green standard grip mat. If you're making the dashed cut line cardstock frame, it just uses the fine point blade. If you're making the scored version of the cardstock frame, follow the prompts to change your tools as needed. Now place your first mat's material on your machine mat and use a brayer to make sure it's fully adhered. Then load the mat into your machine and press the flashing button to begin cutting. When the cut is finished, unload the mat, flip it over onto your work surface and roll it gently back to release the cardstock. This will prevent curling and ripping. Repeat the same steps for the rest of the mats. If you have trouble removing delicate pieces, try using your spatula. Step four, assemble your cardinal and background layers. Here's what all of the cut pieces for the cardinal and background look like. We'll assemble the background first. So set the bird pieces aside for now. Grab your adhesives and let's start layering. Start with your birch tree layer. It's hard to tell the front from the back, okay? But remember that the very straight tree will be on the right 
on the right side. So place it face down, just as I'm doing right here. We'll add the medium or 3 8 of an inch dots starting in the corners. Now these dots are super sticky, which is great for adhering cardstock, but they will stick to everything else, including your fingers. So here's that tip that I mentioned earlier. Cut a few off the roll at a time and separate them from each other. Then place one where you want it and lightly press on the backing paper to keep glue from sticking to your fingers or anything else. Other than the cardstock, of course. We want it to stick to that. Then peel off the backing and you're all set. I added dots to the corners, the middles of the sides, and the trees. Next, flip the layer over and hold it above the plain square layer. Line up the edges carefully and lay it down gently. Is it not quite right? Don't worry. Don't stress about this. Just carefully pick it up and try again. And once everything looks right, press it down. Next, we'll add the pine needle layer. This one takes planning, so line up the needle on top of the trees. See where the needles touch the trees? That's where we'll add pieces of foam tape. You can make small marks on the back with pencil in detailed spots. Place the layer face down. Cut several small pieces of the wider double-sided adhesive tape. One by one, remove the backing tape and stick them to the back of the needle layer. In addition to the needle areas, I added pieces to the corners and sides again. Remove the remaining backing from the adhesive strips, or just a few if you're having trouble lining things up, and then flip the cardstock over, line it up on your assembled layers, and press in place. Now grab your last background layer, the branches, and add small strips of double-sided adhesive foam tape to the back. Make sure they won't show on the front when you do this. Remove the backing and press it on top of the needles. Our background is done. Set your background layers aside to assemble the cardinal. We'll use the smaller glue dots and craft glue since these layers are more intricate. Place the black layer face down and position the beak and white eye circle correctly. See where they overlap? Add a dab of glue to stick them together there. Then add just a bit of glue to the black outline where these pieces touch and put them back in place. Wipe away any excess glue since it will dry shiny and we don't really want that because it'll be distracting, right? If possible, of course. But if you can dry it while it's wet, it'll look better. Place the top layer with the most cutouts face down and add small glue dots. Space them out evenly. Flip the layer over and align it over the middle cardinal layer. Press it down when it looks right. Add glue dots to the back of the middle layer and adhere it to the bottom layer without cutouts. The dots are definitely too big for the delicate outline, so we're going to use glue. Carefully flip the outline over and line it up on the top bird layer, focusing on the upper area. Once that part is attached, gently lift the black tail section. It's thin enough that it will bend easily, but don't let it crease. Attaching the cardinal to the background takes a little engineering since the layers aren't all the same height. So place the cardinal on the background so he's sitting on the branch. Note where you'll need adhesives to keep him in place. I decided to add them under his head, his body, the lower wings, and the tail. You can make light pencil marks on the background in these spots if you'd like. To even out the different heights, we'll stack up our double-sided adhesive foam tape. You can use either width, but I chose the thinner one. I stacked one layer of tape for how deep in the background I needed to bridge. For example, if it's two layers back, stack two layers of tape. So to attach the lower wings to the branch layer, I used just one layer. But to reach the trees under the bird's body, I stacked three layers, you see? Once all the tape is in place, remove the final backing papers. Position the cardinal on top and press him down gently so he's flat. Step five, assemble your cardstock shadow box frame. 
Assembling the cardstock shadow box frame is the same whether you made the version with the score tool or the dash cut lines. First, make sure your work surface is clean so the shadow box frames don't get dirty. Laying down some butcher paper can help. The front of the frames are the surfaces that were face up during cutting. Place them face down on your work surface and fold up along the score or cut lines. You can run your scraper over the creases if you'd like. And if you're having any trouble getting a straight crease, hold a ruler on the line while you fold it along it. Remember to crease the little lines at the corners too. Do you see where the small tabs overlap with a nearby edge? Place a bit of glue there and hold them in place to set. Keep going to make the corners on both pieces. Once the glue is dry, make sure your front frame piece with the cutout slides easily onto the back. Your frame is now ready. Now before you stick the cardinal inside, maybe he'd like some light, maybe even some fairy lights, let me show you how to add them to the dashed cut line frame. First, make sure the lights work by removing the battery protector tab if there is one and turning them on and off. No fun putting in lights that don't work, right? Now grab your medium glue dots, which is my favorite way to adhere fairy lights, by the way, and place the frames back face up and position the battery pack outside of it by a bottom corner. Stick a glue dot into that corner. That's where we'll start adding our lights. Carefully press the wire into the glue dot. Now place glue dots every two to three inches in the crease along the edge and press the wire sections into them. Now we can add our layers. Make nine one inch triple stacks of the medium foam tape. These will hold the cardinal layers closer to the front of the frame and make space for the lights. Stick them evenly around the edges, making sure they don't block any lights. Add one to the middle so the center doesn't sag. Remove the paper from the top of the stacks and place your assembled layers on top. Slide the frame's front over the top, making sure you don't dislodge the wire where it runs to the back. Sneak a few glue dots between the layers around the outside edges. Now the front of the frame won't fall off once you hang it up. Place one more glue dot on the back of the battery pack. Making sure you'll still be able to access the switch, position the pack on the side or the back of the frame and press it in place. So can you see the difference between the two frame versions? The one that we made with score lines contains the light creating a softer glow. Since the dashed cut lines create small holes near the fairy lights, some of their brightness leaks through the creases. I don't think one is necessarily better than the other. It's really your personal preference, but keep these results in mind when you're deciding which version to make. The frame that lets out more brightness could make a really cool nightlight. And you don't have to make your cardinal just like mine, of course. Here is another version where I glued a little bit of glitter to some of the layers to look like snow. You can get as creative as you like. How fun, the sky's the limit. Literally, for cardinals. <laughs> All right, and I knew some of our Cricut Joy crafters would be excited for this project. So here is a perfectly sized version that I made just for you. This little guy cuts out on a normal Cricut Joy mat and then goes together just like the larger version. His layers are just a little bit more delicate, so take your time removing everything from the machine mat and place your adhesives carefully. He'll make an adorable ornament. Just put a loop of string right here in the back or carefully feed it around a glue dot between the layers. Isn't he precious? And remember, if you want to make your cardinal to display in a purchase shadow box like this one, you can find the instructions over at jennifermaker.com slash cardinal SVG. I show you exactly how to cut out the decal and place it right on the glass. It's simple, I promise.
Now, if you have any questions about making this awesome layered cardinal or layered shadow boxes that I didn't answer here, please let me know. Leave your question below this video or ask over at our Cricut Crafters group at jennifermaker.com slash Cricut Crafters. And that's it for today. Until next time, this is Jennifer Maker reminding you to craft a life you love.